night on Panorama. The men who trade sexually explicit images of women online. He's given us location and he says, I'll meet you there. This is not a phenomenon of perverts or weirdos or other oddballs who are doing this. There's too many of them. It's tens of thousands of men. And one of the world's biggest social media companies hosting the harmful material. On Reddit, it's very easy to create a community where this behaviour is normalised and shared without anyone overseeing it. The sickening moment women realise intimate images and videos of them are being shared without their consent again and again. I can't even compute how many people might have already seen them. The only thing that I always feared about was what if my mother-in-law found out? What if any of them found out? In this moment right now, people might be looking at them. People might be copying them, downloading them, sharing them. OK, ready to go when you are. OK, I'm leaving now. And unmasked. A man running an online community peddling explicit images of at least 150 women. That's really not who I expected to see at all. Well, enjoy that sunny weather. That's it from me. Bye for now. I'm Monica Plaha, a BBC News presenter and reporter. Thanks, everyone. Great show. Thank you so much. Like many journalists, social media helps me do my job. We've got the lights up, Monica. Do you know what? They know me so well because every time I take a selfie, they say, can you drop the lights up? Thank you, guys. It's how I share my work, stay on top of the news, and it's also where anyone can contact me about a story. That's how I got tipped off about a disturbing new online phenomenon. Hi, guys. Tanvi Shah is a financial consultant turned social media influencer. Hope everyone's having a good Saturday. So that's going to be she told me how she discovered someone had posted a picture of her on a site called Reddit. And I assumed Reddit is a positive forum where people share reviews and talk about um, people in a positive way. But when I clicked on it, I was like, what is this? And like, it was, I was just shocked. Reddit is a social media platform with more than 50 million daily users worldwide. It brings together news, users' videos and pictures, as well as billions of comments. It's best known for users being able to set up their own groups to discuss almost any topic they want. Most of them are harmless. But Tanvi found that a photo from her Instagram account had been posted in a Reddit group dedicated to men leering at women. What made me feel worse is when I looked at the picture and then I clicked on the comments below, I saw so many men commenting about trying to find out information about me, my name, where I live, the things they would do to me, which were both degrading and sexual. They were calling me names. And that is what really got to me because I felt so objectified and I felt as though I was their property where they were allowed to say and do whatever they wanted to me. The group weren't just sharing images lifted from women's social media. They were also posting intimate photos. To protect the women, we aren't showing any real images and have created a mock-up of the type of material the group was sharing. Some of the pictures appear to be nude selfies, probably sent between partners and not meant for anyone else. There are images here that have probably been sent to people in private, mm. in a safe space, that are now no longer private. Some videos on the Reddit group are far more graphic. It looks like women have been secretly filmed having sex. It's really shocking. Really, really shocking. Do you think that she knows that her image is being shared on this thread? She probably has absolutely no idea. There are more than 20,000 people signed up to the group. 
as far as I can tell, most of them are men, and hardly any of them are using their real names. The words being used make me feel sick to my stomach. I'm so traumatized by this thread, I just can't begin to imagine how women whose explicit images were shared must be feeling. Since meeting Tanvi, I've been searching across Reddit. I found dozens more groups doing the same thing. There are hundreds of explicit images and videos in this folder. I'm literally looking through now, and it's really, really awful to see. Literally so shocked. I never in a million years that something like this even exists on the internet. The deeper I go on Reddit, the worse it gets. Within almost all of these groups, men are selling links to huge collections of explicit images. Five pound, 10 pound, 20 pound. These images and videos are clearly being sold and bought on this Reddit thread. And do the women in them even know? Probably not know. The trade in nudes online has become so widespread, it now has a name. Collector culture is the term that's used because many of the men um, collect these images in large repositories and there's a certain status in having a large number of images. And this can be on small private chat groups, Facebook groups, WhatsApp groups. But there's also websites and groups where tens of thousands of men are meeting and trading and sharing images. How does collector culture happen? It might be that the nude image has been taken with consent, but it might be that there's the image has been taken without that woman knowing it was taken. The image might have been hacked from her account. So there's a number of different ways in which these images can then be um, uploaded onto these websites and taken and shared. On the group Tanvi showed me, the online abuse has followed women into the real world. Users are trying to work out the names, addresses and numbers of the women pictured so they can find them in real life. I find one woman whose personal details were discussed by more than 20 people in the group. It's Monica here, hello. I'm so sorry to hear the awful comments that you've been getting. Like Tanvi, her Instagram picture was posted on Reddit. Now she's being hounded by the group. Yeah, I got like a DM from this random account saying that they found my images. And it was, it was a picture of me fully clothed. I was just wearing a crop top. And like the comments were saying things like, oh, you should get raped. And stuff like that was disgusting. Have they contacted your friends or your family or anyone in your inner circle? There was this guy who was obsessed with my belly button and was asking my friends to beg me to allow him to, like, do stuff to my belly. It's really weird. How many messages do you get? I get them every day. Like, they want me in a hotel and people ask if I take money and stuff like that. Just ask him to meet me and stuff. She's worried what the men might do next. Do you think your private details are being shared online as well? That's what I'm scared about. I don't think my address has been yet, but my phone number, I've heard a few random phone calls from random people pretending to know me. That's vile. I'm really sorry to hear that. So how many other women are being targeted in the same way? There are more than 15,000 images posted in this group. We looked at a thousand of them and found intimate pictures of at least 150 different women. Reddit has a history of hosting controversial sexual content. Leaked celebrity sex tapes have been shared on the site. Several A-list stars are the target of what appears to be one of the biggest celebrity hacking leaks. 
Posts on the websites 4chan and Reddit say the celebrities were exposed. Then, four years ago, it had to close down a Reddit group where users were sharing what's known as deep fake pornography. Famous actors were superimposed into real adult movies. Reddit, too, the site where the community started, changed its rules to forbid involuntary fake pornography. Reddit says its rules are now much tighter. It recently widened its definition of non-consensual sexual content prohibited on the site. But how come I can still find so much of it? It's about the way Reddit polices itself. Reddit can be seen to be more of a kind of Wild West space than other platforms. Really, they're quite light touch compared to the other platforms. And that's an intentional choice to give power to the people who use the platform. Reddit insists it is not light touch. It says it has a dedicated internal safety team which uses a special software to remove harmful content. It also employs admins to enforce Reddit's rules. But an important part of overseeing the groups is done by what's called moderators. Moderators kind of signed up to help police the content in their community. Uh, they have the power to remove posts, they have the power to ban people. And look, these people aren't being paid, but they have volunteered to keep communities, you know, obeying the rules. Has this been an issue for Reddit? If you're not policing things very tightly from the top, it's much more difficult to make sure that abuse of those platforms and abuse of people who use them and the content that's shared on them um, is kept in check. Reddit expects its moderators to help police the groups. But I found a moderator who does the opposite. Remember the group that targeted Tanvi and the other women? It was set up by the moderator. He goes by the name Zippo Mad. But who is he? I take a look at his previous comments on Reddit. Here he's posted a screenshot of an image which he said in the description, oh, it's a leak. It's a leak of a sex tape. Here, here's another one. I have her number and I have her address. So he's obviously got private details, private information of women, which he is willing to share. That's your address, that's where you live. You could even live at home with your family and your parents. This moderator also calls out people who criticise the group. Someone's complained, asking Zippomad to shut down the page, and then Zippomad has commented, we have snitches on here. I want to track down this so-called moderator. The only clue about Zippomad's identity is that strange name. It turns out he collects Zippo lighters. Now we're on to something. Zippo Mad is offering to sell a lighter. I'm going to reply on a fake account and pretend that I want to buy a lighter. It's worth a try. It's easy for Zippo Mad to remain anonymous online. But even when women know who is responsible for leaking their private images, there might be no protection from the law. I've come to meet Georgie. In 2020, a stranger contacted her on social media to tell her a folder of intimate images of her was being shared online. This time, it wasn't on Reddit. Hi. Georgie. You look cold, come in. Hi. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. It's Hi. nice to see you. I knew exactly what those pictures were. I remembered those pictures. And they were ones that I shared with an ex-partner many years before that I was assured by that ex-partner had been deleted. And now a complete stranger was sending those images back to me. I can't even compute how many people might have already seen them. And there is no way of stopping more people seeing them. 
in this moment right now, people might be looking at them. People might be copying them, downloading them, sharing them. They can even print them out and put them on the wall if they want to. Once something's on the internet, it's on the internet. <laughs> How did what you experience impact your life? It's horrible, but I have to compartmentalize it because there's literally nothing I can do about it. What's harder is trusting new people, um, particularly in romantic situations. Um, I have been single um, for the last two years and dating is difficult. Her ex-partner admitted to her in a text message he was responsible. Armed with what she thought was damning evidence, she went to the police. The day that the police contacted him for the first time, he sent me a text message in which he actually admitted to sharing the pictures. But he also said that he didn't mean to hurt or embarrass me. Those were, those was the phrasing that he used in the message. That careful phrasing meant he was beyond the scope of the law. Despite having a written admission of guilt in a text message, um, because he doesn't claim to have wanted to hurt me, I was told by the police that there was nothing they could do. And I was absolutely flabbergasted by that, that there was such a huge loophole in the legislation. At the moment, it's only a criminal offence to trade an image on one of these websites if you're doing it directly to cause distress to a victim. And we know that many men trading these images do not want the victims to even know, so there's a huge gap in the law. The problem is the law only focuses on the kind of malicious ex-partner sharing an image, the kind of revenge porn. And this only covers a small number of cases of intimate image abuse. The government says it's considering a proposal from the Law Commission to make it illegal to share an intimate image without consent, regardless of the perpetrator's motives. For now, the law doesn't sufficiently protect women being abused online like this. But what about the tech companies? I've spoken to seven women who've struggled to get their private images removed from Reddit. Hi. Hi, how's it going? Four of them say the material was never taken down and some had to wait up to eight months before it was deleted. Social media companies are saying that the way that they respond to intimate image abuse is to improve reporting, but reporting is too late. In 24 hours, a piece of content can spread not only within a platform, but across platforms globally. And then need to be taken down, which is much harder. Reddit says it removed more than 88,000 non-consensual sexual images last year. But you don't have to look very hard to find many more on the site. Reddit needs to do more to invest in implementation, to prevent images from being uploaded in the first place, so that less is spent on trying to take down images. If harm is being prevented, we have less women that are experiencing this form of abuse and we have less perpetrators. Reddit told us its safety teams regularly take action against communities and users for this behavior, including removing communities that are evading a ban. Zippomad, the moderator responsible for the group trading sexually explicit photos and videos, is one step ahead of Reddit his group has been shut down twice due to complaints, but he just sets it up again. Almost 2,000 more images have been shared, and there's something else about this group. This group is dedicated to sharing images of South Asian women. The title of it is too offensive for me to even say. It's vile, it's a racist slur, and quite frankly, I don't feel comfortable even repeating it. The comments, the comments constantly refer to women in the most racist, misogynistic, and degrading way. I've spoken to several women whose naked images and videos were shared in this Reddit group. 
Only one of them was prepared to go on camera, as long as we disguised her voice and identity. We're calling her Aisha, and we are meeting at her home. She believes she was secretly filmed. When I saw it, I was just shocked myself because I was like, is that even me? It looks like me, but I don't remember it happening. I put my family through so much and being a Pakistani girl, it's not right in our community for us to even get sexual before marriage or anything like that. That's not acceptable. My dad went through pure depression. My mum went through depression herself as well. I felt so ashamed of everything that was going on and that I'd put them in this situation. I always just blamed myself. Aisha got married soon after her images and videos were posted on the group. She says her new husband is very understanding, but she's worried about his family finding out. I actually got married and it's probably the most happiest day of my life something that I always looked forward to as a little kid. The only thing that I always feared about was what if my mother-in-law found out? What if any of them found out? If they found out about the videos, I don't think I will be with them. What makes you say that? Why do you think you're not going to be with them? I don't think anyone would accept in the Muslim community for girls' videos to be leaked out. And obviously her body being shown to thousands and thousands of men. At the time, Aisha was too scared to tell those closest to her. I stopped socialising. I stopped going out of the house. I was in and out of psychiatric units, and I don't think I even saw my body, where I didn't have cuts all over my body. It was just always self-harming, suicidal attempts, because it's coming to a point where I can't bear life anymore. Some charities say South Asian women are particularly vulnerable to this type of abuse. This is impacting women and girls globally, but we have to put it into context of if you are a South Asian girl who's been conditioned to not talk about these issues, you don't have the ability to go and talk to your mum necessarily, or your sister, or your aunt, or a family relative. We've had women and girls that have rang the helpline absolutely petrified that images are going to be leaked, where they're being blackmailed to pay money, where they're being blackmailed to perform sexual favours to avoid such images being leaked. None of this should be a surprise to the men posting and trading material on the Reddit group set up by Zippomad. Most of them appear to be from the same communities as the women being targeted. This comment is written in Hindi. Girls are being sworn about in Urdu and Punjabi. It saddens me, but it doesn't shock me. South Asian men all know that that person has no ability or limited ability to speak out, that they are silenced by notions of shame, stigma and honour. So the fact that they're doing that, knowing that, and the degree of power and control that they have, is absolutely disgusting. Zippo Mad, the Reddit moderator who set up that group, has been in touch. He's agreed to sell me a lighter. When I say me, I mean our undercover reporter. So Zippermad goes, you leaving at one question mark? And I've replied saying, leaving in 10 minutes, I should be there just after 1 p.m. He's read the message. It's blue ticks. He's given us location and he says, I'll meet you there. It's 10 minutes to get there. Finally, we're going to be face to face with the man who created a group trading explicit images and videos of at least 150 women. There we go. That's close. Currently parked outside and our undercover reporter, and he's just about to make his way in. OK, ready to go when you are. OK, I'm leaving now.
He's going in now. Let's see. Let's wait. How are you? Oh. Is it Himesh? Yes, it is. Himesh. Nice to meet you, man. You can just see in the corner of the window that our undercover reporter is now sitting at a table with the people that have just walked in. Oh, is it new? It's not new. It's, it's been used. I bought it like that. But... This is Himesh Shingardia, the man running the Reddit group. He went to university, has travelled around Asia, and is now employed as a manager in a big company. That's really not who I expected to see at all. Himesh Ngardia later told us he set up the group as an appreciation of South Asian women, not to target them. Due to the high number of users, he found it impossible to moderate them. He says he never shared anyone's private details, and he even helped to remove some sexually explicit material when asked to by women. He adds that he is extremely remorseful and he apologizes to the women. But Himesh Shingardia is only one of many men who behave like this online. Unfortunately, I think what some of this tells us is about levels of misogyny and discrimination against women and the objectification of women. Men aren't necessarily doing this for sexual gratification. So they're doing it as it's about their masculine status amongst groups of men. That's why they're not going to the freely and easily accessible porn sites, but they're taking and trading these sorts of images. So it's not about sexual arousal or sexual gratification. It's about their group bonding and their kudos amongst their friends. This is not a phenomenon of perverts or weirdos or other oddballs who are doing this. There's too many of them. It's tens of thousands of men, average men. Himesh Ngardia has now deleted the group and deactivated his profile. Reddit has removed similar groups we reported to them. Thousands of women's images or videos have been removed. But that won't make up for the harm done to them. For now, the law and tech companies are not doing enough to combat this abuse. But ultimate responsibility lies with the thousands of men trading, selling and sharing these explicit images. My message out there for all the people that are doing this Please just stop this. And anyone that's obviously going through this, just speak up and you do have a voice. Since I found out, I started talking publicly about it and campaigning. I have just found so much more fulfillment and empowerment. And it has actually led me to some amazing things, despite having gone through such, such a painful experience. When you are held accountable, when it is illegal, when the government does impose bills and laws, that's when you're going to be in serious trouble.